and all things. Mm -hmm. No, not, not some things, but God. Right. And all things mm -hmm. shall be added unto you. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Eternal life is appointed to be your inheritance. This is the time of promise. Paul said, he labored for which the, for the promise of our fathers that the 12 tribes instantly serving God hope to come because there's a destiny for these people that were looked over. But God never looked over you. David said, God has been mindful of us. He will bless us. Right. He will bless the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them to fear him both small and great. Ye are the blessed of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, you must embrace that in faith. You must embrace that in confidence. You must embrace that in strength. Because God said the poor has hope. When Christ's blood was shed, he left you some gifts. Faith, hope, charity. He wants you to be in these spirits. Be in this confidence. Be in this insurance and grow in it. To develop from the parent source. Mm -hmm. To be in the vine and to know that God said, I will never leave you. Mm -hmm. Never leave you nor forsake you. If you sin, I'm going to chastise you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to correct you, but I will never leave you. Meaning this marriage, this relationship cannot be severed. Mm -hmm. Once you step into the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Once you take what? The street of salvation. Mm -hmm. Because this is the day now you're in. Mm -hmm. God is calling you because he promised to do many great things for you. He said in and, um, Jeremiah 32 verse 40, And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. It says in the book of Hebrews 13 verse 20, hear what it says here. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 because this must be understood. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead the Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight mm. through Jesus Christ. Right. It says through the blood of the everlasting covenant, mm. not the Mosaic covenant. There's a blood of an everlasting covenant, and God explained and gave Jeremiah some light about it, that when I make this covenant with them, Jeremiah, I will not turn away from them to do them good. Mm. So God is only doing you good. So what did God say? Hope for good. Mm -hmm. He not turn away from you to do you good. It says, I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they may not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. Hold it now. Can you feel that, saints? Mm -hmm. God said, I'm not going to turn away from you to do you good. I'm saying this to you with my whole heart and with my whole soul. Mm. Man has to meditate there. Mm. God said, I will not be wrought with you nor rebuke you. That's done. Mm. I'm calling you in love with my whole heart and my whole soul. God wants us to feel that. I mean, all I want for you is love. So we should be in what God said, I will yet be inquired of Israel to do this for them. We should only want the love of God. What did God say? Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Yea, Lord him ye nations. Because God has called the family back to the faith, back to the, to the love of God, into the future eternal life. But he said, God shows he's faithful to the Jew first. God, I didn't forget you. No, 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 no. Mm. No, you may have forgot, but I didn't forget this. I didn't forget what I promised. Yeah. I didn't forget what I decreed. Yeah. Your cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad. God said you're going to have prosperous cities. God told us to you, Israel, that he's going to prosper your cities, that you're going to be rejoiced in Jerusalem, and I'm going to comfort you. So the banner and the, and the mention of Israel cannot be kept silent because God is faithful in covenant. And this was all about love from the beginning. Mm -hmm. When God said, I'm going to make a name for myself with Israel, I want all the families of the earth to see the kind of God I am by how I'm dealing with Israel. I'm delivering them from being oppressed. I don't want them oppressed. I don't want them mistreated. I'm giving them laws because I'm about judgment and justice. 
They're going to break my laws, but I'm going to bless them anyway. And after I bless them, and when they break the laws, they're going to bring upon themselves the curses. But after they bring upon themselves the curses, because I'm a faithful God, because I'm loving, I'm going to let Christ come to redeem them from the curse of the law. He's going, he going to deliver them from the curse of the law, that being dead wherein they were held, they may come to serve me in newness of spirit, because I have more blessings for them. I have more good things I want to do for them. Hold on, Christ said something secret. In my Father's house there are many mansions. This is not about just the land of Jerusalem. This is not just about the land of Israel. Christ said in my Father's house there are many mansions. There's an eternal inheritance that Israel you must have, that God wants you to have, and, the, and, and declared for you to have, and promised for you to have. So Israel, in this age and hour and time, the movement in the community is a movement because of the spirit. When the time of the promise is drawing nigh, the time to receive the blessing is drawing nigh, God is giving it to you, so he's calling you by the gospel, and that's the only way to receive it. Now, I want to make one last thing in closing. Mm -hmm. Brother Lahab, mm -hmm. When you are in need of spiritual help, mm -hmm. support, mm -hmm. recovery, as well as spiritual stamina and fortitude mm -hmm. and enduring power, mm -hmm. we must look expectantly unto the bishop and shepherd of our souls, to our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and, and, and look into the green pastures of his gospel and the spirit of the glory of God. God loves you. And God wants that known to you. And God is with you. And when God is saying he's loving you, he's telling you, I already forgave you. The past is the past. It's going to be like a dream. Embrace the future. Embrace the gospel. Embrace the promises. Embrace the blessings. Embrace your destiny. Leave the despair. Leave the sorrow. God said, put on a double garment of the righteousness. Of God, meaning the love is coming to you double. The love is coming to you in force. And the faith is working by love. And God said the word worketh effectual in them that believe. Mm -hmm. If you will believe the gospel, God said it will activate for you. Mm -hmm. But you're broken off because of unbelief. So wherever you are in the ghettos and the captivities and the slums, God said if you will believe the gospel, faith is going to work by love for you. The miracles will operate in your life. God will show you favor. God will show you love. God will provide your needs. Now, one last verse, Zechariah chapter 3, verse 17. And we're going to step out, Brother Lahab, right mm -hmm. here. Zechariah 3, verse 17. Because mm -hmm. God wants us to understand this. I promise you. Yeah, I promise. Mm -hmm. Christ is the minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises, to settle without any questions and doubts. That you have a future and you have a blessing. Now, let me see here. Let me see. Zephaniah. Chapter 3, verse 17. Let me stop here. Here we go. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not thy hand be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest in his love. So when Christ came, he left the spirit of love with our people. And he wanted us to continue in it. It said, ye which have believed do enter into his rest. The rest is God resting in the love. So when Christ said to us, brothers and sisters, what did he say? He said, this is my commandment that you should love one another. I took away the judgments. I blotted out the handwriting of the ordinances. I took it out of the way, kneeling it to the cross. I left you in love. I left you in blessing. I left you in comfort. Now comfort one another with these words. This gospel must be preached in all the world. And it said, then shall the end come. Because God wants his love to be known. But first, in his faithful kindness, it had to be known in Israel. So God is having mercy on his afflicted. So Israel, you can take courage. You can take hope. You can take your blessing. You can take your ha inheritance. You can take happiness. Hold on. God said, give them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Because you can take the garment of praise now. Because God is loving you, and he going to get you a name and a fame. And a praise in all places you will put to shame. He said one thing in the prophets. I will cause that brightness to be shown throughout all the world, throughout all the countries. You're going to be a bright and wise and intelligent people. How, what is the brightness? Christ said, I am the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. 
in coming into the gospel of Christ is how you come into the light and you come into the brightness. And with that light and that understanding, you will grow, you will develop, you will prosper, and you, you're showing God that you, you, you remember him and you love him and you appreciate him and be in the prayer one for another. Be in the understanding with the condition of your people. Um, God said, finally, brethren, live in peace. I'm going to read this last verse here because the promises is over our people. So the question that was said in initially in the beginning, um, why is it that we talk so much about Israel? Because God is talking about Israel. God is talking about the situation. He's correcting the misunderstanding that the people had because of the circumstances and the tribulation it came into. And God wants them to understand his hope, his nature, his future, his eternal purpose, which is divine love. It began in Israel. It's to the Gentile also. But you cannot forget the children of promise. The firstborn children of promise. Because everyone who believes in Christ are children of the promise. But Israel, you are appointed to whom pertain of the promises. So not the Mosaic law anymore. The promised blessing. Abraham did not look at the deadness of his body when God promised him. So don't look at the deadness of this carnal body. Look at the promise. And God is faithful that promise. Sarah, our mother, judged God faithful that promise. You must judge God faithful that promise. First Peter 3, verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Mm -hmm. Have compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil. Or railing for railing. But contrawise blessing. Knowing that ye thereunto. Knowing that ye thereunto called. That ye should inherit a blessing. The gospel is your blessing. Mm -hmm. Live the blessing. Walk in the blessing. First learn the blessing. Right. Embrace the blessing. Because God promised you life in Christ. The promise of the Spirit is given to them to believe. That's why there's so much false teachers out here moving people into unbelief. Because the Spirit activates and comes to you when you believe the gospel of Christ. Brother Law, go ahead, Brother Law. Right. I just want to say this, Brother Cross, before we close, right? Yes. Uh, people are asking about, well, now that we're in the gospel, right, yes. then what are the state and lifestyle of the people? Yes. Well, God's Christ said you're in liberty. Yes. And liberty, the, liberty is the state of being free. Free from the mosaic uh, condemnation. Free from the laws of sin and death. That's what you're free from, okay? Now, um, liberty, the state of being free, uh, within society from oppressive uh, um, restrictions. The Mosaic Law was oppressive restrictions. You had to be here, you had to be there, you had to do this, you had to do that. Now you're free to walk in love. Now you're free to love who you want to love, hang out who you want to hang out with, but God told you to hang out with the righteous. Uh, that you all the righteous, you gather yourself together. God commanded all the righteous, all of us that, are, uh, that love Christ, to gather together. And so a lot of brothers, are, we're gathering together with brothers and sisters, and they're gathering together with us, because we're gathering together for that great day. But now you're under liberty now. So you're free now. You're not, you're not under any oppression, um, except the Gentiles' oppression here in America and around the world, and their wickedness. Well, they're going to be judged and brought forth to justice. Uh, they're going into captivity for what they've done to the nation of Israel. But God wants you to understand the liberty that he's given you. Now, Brother Cross, uh, yes. a lot of people ask, well, where is Christ at now, right? Yes. We're going we're gonna, to uh, mention this about Christ. Christ sits on the throne in the kingdom of God on the right hand of the Father, as the Bible said. That's where Christ is at, okay? Christ, the throne represents total rulership and power. He sits on the right hand of the Father, and the Father in Christ sits on those thrones together, reigning over this entire universe. And also what's happening on this earth and, and what's happening in your life. Uh, Christ is saving Israelites, feeding Israelites, helping, supporting Israelites on this planet earth night and day. Those who reject, those who reject righteousness are being destroyed night and day. Okay, so now, uh, the other part about Christ is, so how does Christ... Um, how does Christ live in the world of the kingdom of God? Go ahead. Right? Christ lives in majesty. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, um, 
in ex pure expression, state, stateliness, dignity, beauty, royal power. Thus Christ lives in royal power. So to understand this about your God, and people ask him where Christ is, Christ is sitting on the right hand of the throne of the Father in this power. Okay? Um, in royal majesty, uh, uh, in the stateliness of dignity, beauty, royal power, supreme greatness. <laughs> So you get this vision in your mind where Christ is sitting at. Supreme he's, greatness. He's sitting in supreme greatness. Go now. ahead. Okay. After he served the Father and did what the Father wanted to die for the sins of his and the whole world, the Father gave him all power in heaven and earth and put him in supreme greatness. <laughs> so that's where the King of Israel is at now. Okay. So you understand.